You've heard it said NASA's space launch system is behind schedule and over budget, so why not scrap it? Well, NASA already has hardware built for the rockets and capsules for the next four missions. A large part of it is sitting just outside New Orleans at NASA's Michoud Assembly Facility, and only NSF got a tour inside. Sponsored by Novatech. The entire floor at Michoud, sometimes referred to by the workers as MAF, is full of parts for the upcoming crewed lunar flyby Artemis II mission, the moon landing mission Artemis III, and even some parts for missions beyond that. From where we're sitting right now, it's exciting to look around and point at development hardware, uh, structural test article hardware, and flight hardware. What you're seeing right now is the entire length of the core stage for Artemis II with most of it already covered with the special orange insulating foam. Now it's down to something called FIFT, the Final Integrated Functional Test, basically making sure everything works. We've done all of the individual functional tests on the five elements, um, and now is when we really see, put, we hook them all up together um, and really test out um, uh, all of the functionality of the rockets. So That's Amanda Gerdy Jansen, Core Stage Assembly, Integration, and Test Leader for Boeing, NASA's prime contractor for SLS stages. Following testing, the giant core will have to be prepared to be loaded onto the Pegasus barge for shipping to the Kennedy Space Center. So there's really, um, that's kind of final fairing install, um, shipping covers, antenna covers, kind of all of the pieces that can't get exposed and all of the pieces that will be hooked up um, when we go stack the uh, full rocket. Uh, so we put covers on a lot of that, uh, systems tunnel covers, uh, put those on. Um, and then once we're in shipping configuration, uh, we do some rotations there. Where are you looking at for finishing the testing and then and kind of being ready to go, uh, ready to, to, to roll out to the barge? So we're working to a plan right now that we, um, to complete by the end of the year. But it's not just the core for the first lunar flyby in 50 years. Orion spacecraft prime contractor Lockheed Martin is also getting final pieces ready for launch delivery. Fairings for the Orion service module are there, along with something very important for a crew flight, seats. We're standing in front of um, a couple of the crew seats for Orion. Um, and so I was asking you before we went on here, which one this is for, and you said yes. So could you talk about, could you talk about what we're looking at here? And so they are reusable. The, the crew seats that we're looking at here are Artemis II and Artemis III crew seats. And likely uh, reusability beyond that. Uh, you see two of the crew seats here. That's a, there's a, uh, another crew seat that's not shown here and a pilot seat also that's part of our fabrication, part of our build. Okay, are these, I mean, are, is there anything different about, like are there mission specialist seats, commander seat, or pilot seat, or are they interchangeable? They're interchangeable. Uh, the, the only uh, differentiation is the pilot seat. The pilot seat has some additional controls. And what you don't see here are the, uh, the arm mounts, so there's a set of arm mounts that are going to go onto these before we deliver these. Some, there's some additional functional testing that we're going to do on the, uh, the armrest before we send them out. And and um, these are obviously you can see they're adjustable yes. to the different to the different uh, sizes of uh, crew members. Yes, they're adjustable for a, a large individual and a small individual. I'll just I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. So in terms of sort of in terms of the types of testing that you're going to do on these before they're ready to go to Kennedy, what, what do you need to do? It's just functional testing, testing from here on out. The, uh, the design is, is certified for, for flight, uh, so it's just functional testing associated with the actual flight units themselves. Of course, NASA is already eyeing the first lunar landing since Apollo 17 in December of 1972. Artemis III will land the first woman and the first person of color on the lunar surface ever. In case there's any concern about delays, well, we could see parts of the core stage for that mission. So core stage three, we're working through um, integration on the forward skirt and the inner tank. Um, we're processing the LHG tank, and then we're working on our welding on our LOX tank. Engineers predict that could arrive at the Cape as soon as 2024. They're also working in tandem with teams at KSC to prepare the Artemis three engine section. And once again, the focus is also on getting Orion ready for its historic crew of four on that mission. We were able to see some of those Orion service module fairings, which will keep the capsule protected until the rocket reaches space, when it will be jettisoned, along with an adapter cone to help it attach to the main rocket. Another key reason so much of this hardware is at Michoud is because of their unique technology, just like today's video sponsor. 
And that sponsor is Novatech, who has been pioneering the design and manufacturing of load cells for more than 50 years. These force measurement sensors are accurate throughout a range of temperatures, in high G situations, and even in a vacuum. In fact, they've sent load cells to NASA to help test their inflatable heat shield concept known as HIAD. But it's not just the space industry who trusts Novatech. In case you didn't know, NSF is full of Formula One fans, and Novatech is playing its part in helping to make the races even safer. These load cells were used in the development of the Halo safety devices for F1 cars. For more information, check them out on their website at novatechloadcells.co.uk or check out the link in the description. And thanks again to Novatech for sponsoring this video. Now, back to Philip at Mashoud. Following that mission, SLS will change into its next variant, Block 1B, which is already under construction at Mashoud. It turns out a lot of the delays is just waiting for a turn in the welding tools. It's pretty close to the ready. We've already got the majority of the, the work uh, complete. So just waiting for the opportunity to get it down. That vehicle will be able to lift more mass, will be slightly taller, and include an exploration upper stage and a larger fairing, which is already being welded. These are friction stir welding samples, and can you talk about what, what we're looking at with this plate and that plate? Sure. So this is a, uh, a self-reacting, it's a, it's a test sample, as you indicated. It's a uh, self-reacting friction weld. This is the type of weld that we do on the majority, or all of the uh, PV welds for the crew model. All the pressure vessel welds, right. Um, what's the difference between, I mean, this is obviously a, a sort of a clean uh, set of two plates together. Um, what's, the, what's the difference between this one and, and, and the one on the right that's got, that's got these uh, things? <laughs> they almost look like tools sticking out of them. Sure. What's this one? So again, a, a test uh, panel. Uh, these are plug welds. Okay. Uh, so as we talked before, with a uh, self-reacting friction weld, there is a start and a stop location. Uh, and those start and stop locations are cleaned up and then they're closed out with plug welds. Okay, does it leave, it, but it doesn't leave, it, it doesn't leave these, these elements no. in them? No. It, this there's, is just a... There's an element of, of this piece that is, uh, is spun in the tool there. And it, when it's inserted at a high speed and load into the, into the hole, it forms a, a friction weld, a plug friction weld and then this uh, the stem, and there's a, a kind of a nut on the other side that are machined off and cleaned up to make a nice smooth finish to the weld. Right, and so you have this articulating tool that it sits on that, that moves around to the different weld positions it needs to go to? Correct. And for the crew capsules, they're ready to apply the special heat shield blocks known as Avcoat. And so then the, this, this final piece, this is, a, this is just a sample for demonstration purposes of Avcoat, which is the, the, the base heat shield material? Correct. So this is Avcoat. This is a, a, a sample of an Avcoat billet, as, as we call it. Uh, it's a curved sample. We, we manufacture both curved and straight uh, billets here in a different part of the factory. Uh, they are sent to uh, Kennedy Space Center for final machining and installation onto the heat shield. They form the, uh, the outer mold line of, of the heat shield. So it's approximately 170 blocks that we manufacture. It's uh, has some weight to it. Uh, as it gets machined, it gets machined down into uh, thinner pieces that, that are fit to the, uh, the heat shield. So the final thickness and weight are, are less than what you see here. We also saw parts of core stage four ready to be assembled, including barrels and domes for the engine section, inner tank, and propellant tanks. Also in the welder, the pressure vessel for the fifth Orion crew capsule for Artemis. So this is a, a cone panel weld tool. So we'll, uh, when we get the cone panels here for Artemis 5, we'll place them on the tool. Uh, there are three longitudinal wells that we'll complete to, uh, to complete the entire cone for Artemis 5. Okay, and so you, they're, they're, they're the three, what, what are the three panels, the, the three cone panels that, that they come here? They are, uh, there's a hatch section, there's a section that, that has the windows incorporated, and there's a more generic section that, that closes out the cone. The team at Michoud wants everyone to know they're working hard on America's return to the moon and are committed to deep space exploration. We're, we're to the point now where you're like a pre-flight checklist. Yes, I got the tooling. Yes, the facilities are there. Yep, I'm, I'm, I've got all my engineering released. I'm, I'm, I've got hardware coming in. I got workers' trucks being re released, right? So it's in that, in that right before execution phase of trying to make sure all this stuff is in place to go, we're ready, right? <clears throat> Thanks again to Novatech for sponsoring this video. 
I'm Philip Sloss for NSF. Thanks for watching.